Hey everybody, welcome to the second edition of Drive Through. Now, today I'm going to drive through Cuba Libre. This has been the most requested playthrough, drive through that I have had. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the game, I'm going to set up a game and play as all four players. Now, I'm going to play from the perspective of the government, and I will reference the solitaire player aid just as a general sense I'm not going to adhere to it because I am going to actually kind of play as I would you know with the other factions I've played as all the factions I've played the game several times um, at least 10 I don't I probably stop keeping track but so I'm going to jump into kind of a just a brief kind of setup you know what the game's about you know what each faction is trying to do to win and then go in and start playing the game. Now, I may just play through to the first propaganda card. Basically, there's four propaganda cards, kind of like four scoring rounds. They're not really scoring rounds. They're almost like little bookkeeping rounds in a way. But that's a time when you'll check for victory. So I may just play through the first one and then kind of come back here and give you sort of my thoughts about how the playthrough went. Uh, but I may play through the whole game. Uh, <laughs> the game takes a little bit of time to play, about three to four hours. Uh, if I do play through the whole game, you'll see probably multiple videos of this go up uh, over time. But I'll definitely play through, uh, you know, what I will here, and then, you know, we'll just see how many I actually end up uploading at once. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the setup and all that kind of good stuff real quickly, and then I'll just jump right into playing the game. Alright, first thing is, if you're not aware of Cuba Libre at all, it basically is about Castro's insurgency to power in 1957-58 Cuba. Basically, I don't know, this is probably the fifth Cuban revolution since, you know, the 1800s. So in the game, each player, up to four players, is going to take on a faction. So you have a blue, red, yellow, and green faction. The blue faction is basically the pre-existing government, the Batista government. The red faction are Castro's insurgencies. These are known as the uh, 26th of July forces. Then you have the yellow directorio forces. And then finally the syndicate, basically the mafia. So each player is trying to vie for control of different parts of the island. So you may be trying to, if you're, let's say, the yellow side, trying to actually control just physical territory and space on the board, whereas if you're the government or uh, Castro's forces, you're trying to get opposition markers here out on the board, and this is actually going to increase your score, so to speak. The syndicate, what they're trying to do is have as many open casinos as they can. So you can see here we have a casino, which is kind of like a base, and this means it's closed and then this means it's open. Now all of this is tracked on the scoreboard here and it just goes around the board like so. And if you look in closely here, you can see the government total support there starting at 16. Now it needs to be at 19 to win the game. Now the government also has the condition that each city there, so there's three cities and these are these uh, circle spots on the board there, they have to be in complete active support there. So you can have active or passive support. The government needs to have active support in all three cities and also have their total support at the 19. You can see there, there's the basis in opposition there. Now the Castro starts all the way down here at seven and for them to win, they need to get all the way up there to 16, which the total support marker is covering. You have these uh, little discs here. These are tracking the number of resources, basically the money. So Castro's forces starts off with 10. The Directorio starts off with five. And then the syndicate and the government there start with 15. So this is the money you're gonna be spending. You'll be moving the markers down the track as you take different actions. And then every propaganda phase, we're gonna check you know, the markers, the opposition and bases, and the number of open casinos, which if I scroll all the way down here, there's three open casinos, they need to have at least eight. So you're gonna check those markers, see if anybody's won. If somebody's won, then the game's over and they win. And then you also get a little bit of resource replenishment, so your resource markers are gonna go back up based on certain things you have on the board. And then we're gonna keep playing. Now, I'm not gonna to get too much more into the basic rules and the you know goals of the game, but I will say I'm gonna set this deck up. I actually took eight cards out of the deck just to kind of play with a little bit shorter of a deck. and. In each of these four somewhat same size piles, we have a propaganda card that I'm gonna shuffle in. So we're gonna have propaganda cards come up. Again, we'll check for victory and resources, and then go from there. The game is basically played by resolving these uh, cards here. So you can see here, 
we have all four factions displayed at the top of every single card and these are the order in which the factions may or may not choose to do their different activities so there's two things a faction can do they can resolve some of their special abilities or different various actions available to them or they can choose one of two possible events on the card in this order. That's all controlled by this matrix up here. At most, two factions will act per turn. So let's say Directorio did their special operations with that activity, and then you know the two six regiment went and did the event. So that's all controlled again by the order on these cards. Now there are four player aids here uh, that give them to everybody, and everybody so everybody can look and see what all the factions have available to them. I won't refer to this too much. If I do screw up, Lena, let me know. It's possible because I have basically three coin games in my head, and sometimes the rally rule is different for the red team in one game versus the other. So I may screw up and do an anti and abyss move or something. I doubt it. I'll try not to. Uh, these are the solitaire operations here. Uh, I won't refer to these, you know, during the recording, but I may glance at these and then edit them out uh, just to go, hey, what would the DR maybe do here? Um, I'll try not to because I've played each faction relatively the same amount. So let me shuffle these decks up and then I'll flip the first card and then we'll just get going. So the first card here is the U.S. Speaking Tour and then the upcoming card which we can see here is a Shiveria. I don't know how to pronounce that. We can see here now the DR, uh, the Yellow Forces are going to get a chance to operate followed by the Syndicate. And then if either these two guys pass, then possibly the government or Castro is going to get involved. Now, just quickly, kind of a quick strategy idea here. The DR and Castro are basically working together to some extent. Um, Castro is going to end up betraying the DR or vice versa towards the end of the game to be the sole winner. Basically, these two forces are insurgency forces trying to take over the government for their own purposes and remove here Batista from power. Now the syndicate is kind of working with the government because they want to exploit the island, they want to make money. It's basically like Vegas in the ocean for them where gambling is legal. And so they may even actually do some sort of muscle or reinforcement for the government. So their factions are kind of paired off nicely to work together. If you do play two player, like you can take over both the green and blue and then fight the other player who has the yellow and red. Now if you play two player, then both of your factions have to meet their victory conditions uh, to win the game. So let's see what the event is here. So DR is going to operate he really wants to get territory he just wants to get out as many of his guerrillas and bases as he can and then that's a pretty much it he's not worried about support he's just trying to overrun uh, the island there so he's got two events to choose from and it says an certain faction adds a die roll of resources or the opposite is add the lesser of plus eight or the eight to the government so uh, the non-shaded area is usually helpful to everybody else and the shade is usually helpful to the government and or the syndicate here well, the DR's got five resources. Uh, he's That's okay. He, he's he, he's going to use a little bit less resources than the other guys. He's not going to get to operate quite as much in the way that he's going to take actions. Uh, so what I'm going to get him out to do is I'm going to have him just kind of rally and get some troops out. Now to rally, it's going to cost the DR one resource per spot. So maybe we'll go ahead and mark these areas here. So I'm going to mark these with white here. Now you can rally if you're the DR any spot where there is not active opposition or active support. Uh, so he could not rally in this space because you can see it's set to currently active opposition, but he can here because it is set to uh, passive opposition there. So that's going to cost him one resource per space, and that's pretty much how all of the actions work. They're going to cost you one per space unless you are the government, and that's a variable amount, which I'll explain when the government takes their turn, but it could cost you two, three, or four. So he's going to use three of his gorillas here in each of these spots like so and that's gonna cost him three resources. Now what he's really trying to consider here is if I take this here, I can take just the action and then that's it. And what that's gonna do is limit the next player, in this case would be the syndicate on this particular card. And he's gonna be limited to just doing a limited op, which basically means you can only activate and do an action in one area. Now if I took this one here, I could do my special operation with a special activity, but that's gonna free up the green guy to do either limited op or actually take one of the events. 
or if I took the event, then I could go here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this with action with the special activity. And if you look here on the left-hand side, you can see all the actions that a particular faction can do, and here are all the special activities. So if we were looking for the syndicate, here's all his actions, and then if he does this special activity, these are what he's gonna do. So what I've basically done here, I've done a rally, and then I'm gonna do a subvert. So what's gonna happen here, I'm gonna spend the three resources there, so I'd move that down from a five to a two, but then I subvert, and what subvert lets me do is any spot that D has DR control, and that just basically means you have more pieces than any other pieces that are on there, I'm gonna get a resource for each of those. Well, this one I already controlled because nobody was there. This one I now control because I'm the only one in here now. So I spent three resources, I control these so I can do mark those two, and then I would get two back. So I'm actually going to a net loss of one. That makes things easy for the syndicate. He's gonna go here. He's actually going to uh, take a look here and he's going to add the lesser of, or excuse me, add a insurgent faction as a die roll uh, to resources there. So I'm gonna roll the dice here. So that's a good roll for him. So he's actually gonna add five resources and then everybody else is gonna add two. So everybody's gonna have a whole bunch of money there. So he's gonna go up to 20. Uh, USA is gonna go, or not USA, it's blue. Uh, he's gonna go up two. One, two, four, the 26, and then one, two, four, the DR. So end of the round here, these guys are gonna to go to ineligible. So the next card's gonna flip up, and then we're gonna see what's under here. And then now, since the yellow guy here, he's not eligible, so he can't activate. So one thing he may have wanted to do was check the events here and see if there's anything coming up that he might want to do. Uh, this one has placed two DR gorillas anywhere. <laughs> and then you set Havana to neutral. Uh, in this case, I wouldn't do that because then I would really tick off the government player uh, you know, right away, but that might be a smart thing to do, frankly, because early in the game is probably the government's best opportunity to win the game. Now, I have seen the government win you know, on the very, very last card of the game, uh, but let's just say that the DR wants to kind of pussyfoot it around and let the government go. So now the government's first up to operate here. He's obviously not gonna you know, get pieces for the DR out for free. He's also going to realize that the DR was very nice to him, so he's not gonna take this event to remove the two DR pieces closest to Havana, which would be the two DR pieces in Havana. However, uh, if we take a look up here, maybe I would do that. Uh, if we take a look up here in Havana, we could get the DR out of there right away, and the event also tells us to minus the DR resources minus three. But just for argument's sake, since we're getting warmed up, let's say the two players had made an agreement not to do that. So the US player is now going to take and do one of his actions because he knows that the red player is not gonna take the event to help the DR either. So we'll go ahead and have the blue player take an action. And right now things are cheap for the government, so they're gonna train. They're gonna get out a bunch of their cubes there. And what do I mean by things are cheap for the government? If you look up here to the US Alliance box over there, at the start of the game, all of the different operations you do are gonna cost you two resources each. Every prop phase, this is gonna drop down here. And then so stuff is gonna get more expensive. It's actually gonna reduce your aid. So remember we have the aid marker there. That actually gives a little bit of a bonus of resources coming in from the US there. So you're not gonna get as much resources, plus things are gonna get more expensive. So early on, we're gonna kind of fortify. We're gonna train, we're gonna get some more troops out of things. So one thing with train is we can actually mark a spot here, and then we can get rid of three, any three cubes throw in a base in that spot so now we can train and add more troops there. That's a little bit risky there because we've got the one uh, gorilla there, but you know it, it, that's, it, it's, a, it's a risk worth taking. So that's gonna be one spot there. And then we're gonna go ahead and mark all three of these other spots here, these other cities. Now currently this is gonna cost us two resources per spot. So that's gonna cost us eight resources down from 17. So that's gonna put us down here at nine. And so those bonus resources, you know, on that first turn kind of came in handy. So now we can put out four cubes. Well, it's kind of good to have a mixture of cubes. The troops are a little bit more effective in removing folks. So let me just kind of divide these up here. We have a bunch of troops up there, so we don't need a lot up there anymore. So I'm gonna take four, put those here, and then four down here. And then we'll just take, you know, two of each and put them up here. So now we have a nice uh, set of control up there. Actually, I should say government control actually dropped away from here because uh, the DR went there. Because you can see that now they're even. Nobody controls it because they have an even number of pieces there. 
So the government did that. Now he's going to decide whether he wants to do a special activity or just do the op by itself. Now the only special activity you can do as the government here when you train is to transport. So if you see here, when you train, oh, you could transport if you want. Well, all that does is actually let us move three troops from a city to any base or any other space. So I think I may go ahead and do that because I like to get control of this back here. So I'll take these three here move them over here. So I will take the special activity. Now I'm gonna get control back of the spot here. Now one thing the government can do as part of the train action is do a civic action. Now the special activities here, these can happen anywhere before, you know, during or at the end of your action. So the civic action part of the training is part of the training. It's not a special activity. So basically when you train, you put cubes out and then anywhere that you control a spot and you have police and uh, troops in a spot, then you can take civic action. That's always gonna cost you four resources to do that, no matter what the special US Alliance track is. So there's basically two spots we could do that. Now, currently Havana is at active support. And what you're looking at here is this gray little population number there. So basically we have, you're gonna get six points of support out of that. But since we have active support, we're actually gonna multiply that there, you can see by two. Now, if we had passive support, uh, that would actually only give us six. We'd actually lose support. Currently we're getting 12 for the whole area there. So back to here, we could spend four resources and drive up support here in Kamagui in the town. You can see maybe or maybe not, this actually has a population of one. So we already have passive support. We could get one more point. Um, but again, remember we need to have fully active support here uh, in these towns. So Santiago to Cuba, you can see there's no support there. So we could drive that up and we could get basically two points. That'll put us pretty close to victory. If we zoom in here, this is what I'm talking about with the government there. See, we start at 16. If I get two more points of support, I basically need one more point. Well, that's obviously gonna come out of here. If I get that, then my requirement of all three cities being an active support and having over 19 support is gonna be there. But here is the trick. I currently only have nine resources left. So it's very, dicey to spend another four resources or another eight resources. You know, if I spent eight resources, I'd be down to one resource. That would just be silly. If I spent four resources, I'd be down to five. Also silly. Now, what do I mean by spending four or eight? Well, if you look here at Kamagui, I, I can do one sort of civic action spend uh, to get one up. Well, if I go over here, I can do two to get these both up. So when you take a civic action, you can spend as much as you want. So sometimes you'll get some terror markers, you know, in a city or in a, a province there. It's going to cost you, you know, four resources to get rid of the first terror marker, four to get rid of the next, and then you can start, you know, changing the support level. So imagine if this was at active support or active opposition had two terror markers on it, I'd spend four, eight, flip this down to pa uh, passive, 12, get rid of that uh, 16, put that up to passive 20, and then get this down to full act. That'd be 24 points to get rid of two, mirror, uh, two terrors and then drive it from active opposition all the way back to active support. That would take quite a bit of resources. <laughs> um, and so thankfully there are events and things that you can you know, happen into that will help you, you know, convert cities a little bit quicker by taking the event. So I'm just gonna sit here, keep the resources like they are. So next is the 26. Uh, he actually has an interesting card coming up. So let's take a look at that card. So right now the event that's currently up doesn't really you know, help the 26 player. If we look at the next card, he's gonna be first to operate. And not only are you looking at the event when you're first to operate, because you're gonna get a chance to take the event, but you're also gonna be able to do an action plus a special activity easier, because you, know, you can basically do whatever you want if you're first. So he may pass. Let's look at the event here. So this says set Sierra Mastra or adjacent to active opposition. That's the good event for him. Or the opposite event is remove all 26 pieces from a city other than Havana. We don't have any pieces in Havana if we're the 26, but it said to set Sierra Mastra to active opposition or an adjacent space. Well, guess what's adjacent to it? This city. <laughs> And what did I just get done talking about with driving terror and you know getting everything back to there? So we're gonna go ahead and pass as the red player. So we move this down here, pass. He's gonna get an extra resource there on the track. 
And then we're going to reset the card. So he's going to come up back to eligible because he passed. These guys will come back to eligible. And then now he's sitting over here all by himself, lonesome there. So now we're going to take a look at the next card here. What's going to come up after that? Okay, there's the next event. We're not going to take a look at that because he's real interested in doing this. So he's actually going to take the event. So Red's blindly going to just take the event, which is going to set up the following faction, which in this case here is the Syndicate. And he's going to be open to do the faction operation and do a special activity without any worries. So his event is very easy. He's going to take and set this here to active opposition. And that's actually going to give him some opposition points because it's one point per population, but we have a multiplier times two. So there we go. Active opposition is going to just go under the government resource tracker. So now we're at 10. We need to get all the way up here to 16. So we're still a ways away. So the syndicate is, of course, going to take the uh, faction off plus special activity. They're really far behind on this card. So if they passed, it wouldn't make sense because they're not even probably going to get to do anything. Well, red's going to go behind, but yellow's getting a first crack. And you're probably not going to have as effective a turn going second. So we're going to do the faction op plus a special activity. So what we're going to do here, let's take these white markers off. And then we're going to go ahead and get some gorillas out here and start to make a little bit of money. So I like to protect my casino. So we're going to go ahead and spend three resources here. One, two, three. And then we're going to put gorillas out in these three spots here where we have our casinos like so. And this is also going to give the syndicate control of this spot. Syndicate control doesn't really usually mean anything, but it's keeping the either the uh, 26 or the government from controlling the space. And the 26 has a similar uh, action they can take, uh, similar to the civic action where you change from support uh, or from opposition towards support. The syndicate or the 26 can go from support back to opposition. That's called agitation, but you need control uh, to do that. So the special activity that we're going to do is actually do profit. So when you do that, you can take these little cash markers here. These are very interesting. I'll talk a little bit more about these later, but you can basically spend these uh, for resources or for placing bases for maybe boosting up some of your ac activities, or you can hold on to them just for resources in the propaganda phase. So I can take in two spots here and put these with these gorillas here. Now this spot, here is kind of crowded. I don't really want the cash to be taken and I don't trust the government because the cash can give you a good chunk of resources there. So we're going to go ahead and put those there and then hopefully we can turn those into a base or use them for resources later. So next card. All right, so we've got the next card. We have a propaganda showing, which is good. I can show you how to kind of go through a propaganda round. This is a relatively early propaganda card, which means we probably have some more time between this one and the next one. Now, currently, thankfully for everybody else, the government is not winning. The government is really close to winning, like I just said. So if they had their Kamigui as active, and then if we look all the way over here, you can see they're basically uh, one resource or one uh, support away from being in victory. So that's why I said a government a victory uh, can happen relatively early if folks are not careful. And my little make-believe alliance between the DR and the government should not have happened. I was just kind of getting my feet warmed with the video here. But you can see that I almost uh, sold the game out there in a couple of turns. Now, speaking of which, we still have to play this card out. So if the government can somehow get uh, you know, another support and get GUI to active support, then they could feasibly win. But the yellow player is not going to let that happen because yellow is up first. And let's see what they can do. They need to block them from getting that last piece of support. And I just realized, uh, without thinking there, that uh, since they got Santiago de Cuba to active opposition times two, then the government, there's no way that they can win because they, they there's no way they can spend enough resources to get this back to active support. They have support elsewhere that they need to hit their 19, but again, you need all three cities there. So I wasn't paying attention when I was talking about that there. So let's look out here. Let's zoom out a little bit and see what the DR wants to do. Now, they probably should go ahead and just hammer the government because, yeah, I would probably put the government on their toes at this point. So if I go ahead and do a terror action here, it's going to cost me a resource like so. I'm going to spend my resource, throw a terror marker out here. What that's going to do is actually reduce the support level there. So that's going to actually reduce the government support by six. He's going to go down to 12. I'm just going to be a big jerk about it. I'm going to go here 
do the faction op only. I could do tear somewhere else. It's not going to do any good because I don't, you have to basically activate the gorillas. If you're not familiar with that concept, the gorillas are face down. You flip them up. This means they kind of been flushed out. Easier for the government to eliminate. They can't usually eliminate any face down gorilla. So this guy up here, you can see his face up. He's now ripe to be taken out, but he's really uh, rattled the snake here and moved the government support down. They're going to have to, you know, uh, spend some more resources to get Havana back into support because really you think about it he just did a huge terror action here in a major metropolitan area people are not happy that the government has let this happen so he's spent the support he's going to go here he's not going to allow any other actions or events and things to happen so the government is forced here to take now a limited op because he chose not to do a special activity so the government currently has a limited op that they can do and so they're going to be, you know, having things cost them a whole lot more here in the next couple of turns. What they're probably going to go ahead and do, and this is a cheap uh, activity, this actually costs you two resources total, no matter how many spaces you do. And you can garrison in these little economic centers here. So if we zoom in here like so, uh, you can see there's one there. You can see that's going to be an economic uh, production area there. If we go over here, there's another one. That's going to give you three there. You can see it in the circle. And there's another one at the south of the map. What you want to do here is get some forces in there. So it costs you either two, three, or four resources based on your lines track, but that's total. So you can move any cubes there to and garrison them in these spots here. You can also do that action to kind of, you know, teleport people back to the city. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now you can see I've got police here in these various areas. And now this is important because when we go into the propaganda phase, if there's any uh, gorillas or anything exceeding the value of uh, the blue cubes there, then we're going to actually instantly sabotage those here with these sabotage markers. And the government's not going to collect resources from them. That's just really going to put uh, the knife right into them. And again, no special activity. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and move into the propaganda phase. So you can see here, we'll take the prop card marker, we'll move that down, check for victory. Nobody's winning right now. We're going to go into resources here. First thing you're going to do is check for sabotage. And again, that's if any in anybody in those garrisoned uh, economic centers is you know outnumbering the government. I just explained that. Next thing we're going to do is get government resources. That's basically the total number of economic resources, which is always eight, unless they're sabotaged, plus the eight. Now the eight starts at 15. So you can see the eight starts here. And so we're going to take eight plus 15, that's 23. So we're going to go all the way up here to 30 resources. So the government has now got a fair amount of resources there. Now the 26th July is going to get a grand total of one resource. Basically it's the number of bases they have out. They just have their starting base out. The Directorio is going to take a look and see all of the areas that they have a piece. So one, two, three, four. So they're going to get four resources there. And then the Syndicate is a very interesting idea here. So the way the Syndicate gets their resources is anywhere that they have uh, gorillas outnumbering police. And this usually never happens, <laughs> but it can. You actually get the population number of the city. So again, remember this was six. That's the big city there. You could feasibly get six, but something has gone very wrong for the government if that's happened. And then you get twice the number of open casinos. Well, we start the game with three of these. Anytime a casino gets taken off of this board here, it comes in closed uh, usually, and then you know opens later. So they've got three. So we're going to give them six resources there up to 23. However, we're going to take a look at control of the areas where we have the uh, open casinos there. Now, thankfully for the syndicate, these two areas are syndicate controlled. Now, Havana is not syndicate controlled, so they've got to skim off two resources uh, to any controlling faction in a city or a province there. So two of these are going to come off of the syndicate and then we're going to see over here they're going to go towards the government so the government's going to go up to 32 there so if they had a second uh, casino in there the government you know the syndicate would collect four and the government would get two of those out of there now each space i should say has a maximum of two bases that can be in it plus two casinos finally we have these cash deposits here and anybody can do these you can actually steal these uh, from the different players so you can turn these in for six resources or uh, actually turn these into a base. So now I've got to kind of really think here. Currently the syndicate sits at 21 resources. Now to win the game they need eight open casinos and they also need 31 or more resources. I didn't mention that at the beginning. 
but so they need a lot of money and a lot of open casinos. So I could go here, I could get two more open casinos out, that would put me at five. So I just need three more, or I could get another 12 resources or do six resources and one base. Now, it's probably easy to get a base out here and that's gonna be safe. So let's go ahead and just do that for fun. So I'm gonna get that out here. This is gonna come in close there, but it'll open up here in a second at the end of the propaganda phase. And then I, mm, I don't know what to do here. I'm gonna go ahead and just split the difference. So this one, he's gonna turn in four resources here. So he's gonna get six resources out of there. That puts him at 27. I mean, he's just about as rich as the government currently is there. So now we've resolved all the different resources. We're gonna move this over here. The US Alliance is gonna drop down. So this marker is gonna drop down here. So it means we're gonna lose 10 aid and everything is gonna cost us three resources. So our aid here is gonna go down to five. And that is no good. So now we've adjusted the US Alliance. Now we can do civic actions and then agitation and then expat backing. So basically that's three actions that the government first can do, the civic action, then the 26 can do agitation, and then the yellow team, the DR, can do uh, expat backing. So at the end of the game, we might also again check for victory here uh, if nobody has you know, won the game. You know, at the automatic victory at the start of the propaganda phase in that last round, you can check and see, okay, does anybody, you know, by doing these agitation or the civic action now win the game? And now here's an opportunity for the government to basically spend all the resources they just got. So this is what the government really has to think about here. They've currently got 32 resources, so they have a little bit of a wealth of resources, and they can really spend that to drive away all of this support and really bring it up. Now currently, there is a terror marker up here as well. So remember I was talking about that. So to get rid of that terror marker and then go to active support, that's gonna cost us eight. To get this back to active support, that's gonna cost us another, another four. So that would be 12. That would put us at 20 resources left for uh, the remainder of the next you know, phase of cards until the second propaganda card. I could be silly and go over here and flip this one, but that would be one, two, three, four. That would be 16 just to give myself two points. But I need that, I need that. Remember, you gotta have all three cities in active support. So that's a little bit of an albatross there. I'll tell you what I am gonna do. I am going to spend the 12. I'm gonna go back to 20 resources here. I'm gonna get this up here. That's gonna give us a level of support. I am gonna flip this one back here and also get rid of that terror marker first to do that. And then that's gonna give me another six. So that is going to put me at 19 uh, total support there. Now the thing to keep in mind, the frustrating part of this is that the terror marker is actually gonna go ahead and disappear. So this is basically either me doing the civic action now or later. There could be a card that comes up that lets me do the civic action for free. So I'm gonna go ahead and rethink that. I'm gonna go ahead and just um, do the one spot here. Let me think about this now. So I'm gonna do that. This costs me eight, so I can put another eight back here. That'll put me back to 28, which will put Havana here back to uh, passive support because we know that this terror is gonna go away. So that's only gonna cost me four later. This is gonna go away at the end of the propaganda round. Um, and then maybe I'll turn around and spend the 16 to convert that. I don't think so. So I'm just gonna kinda hang tight. I'm gonna let that go. I've gotta adjust my support though. That's gonna go back down by six. So I'm now at 13 there. We're gonna leave that go. Now it's the turn for the 26 to go. The only spot that they control here is this spot here. It's already at active opposition, so there's no reason for them to spend. Basically, they spend uh, one resource per thing to go from support to active opposition. Uh, there's no reason for them to do anything there, so we'll skip that. And then we have the expat backing there for the yellow side. So what that is basically is a free rally action. So that action I took earlier where I'm rallying troops, I can do that basically in one spot for free. Um, hmm, I could turn these two into a base. When you do a rally action, you can basically, like the government, instead of removing three cubes, you can remove two gorillas, and the 26 can do that too, and make a base out of that, or I can get a guy out. So, I say what I'm gonna do, put this out here and get that out. 
because it's nice to be in high population areas when you rally as a guerrilla because the population is going to directly impact the number of troops that you can put out if you have a base there. So you have a, if you have a base, you basically, uh, it works a little different for the factions. Basically, you add the bases plus the population, you get that many troops out, give or take, based on <laughs> what faction you're doing. So now we're going to go to the redeploy, and this is where the government has to redeploy uh, any troops that are not where there's a base. So good thing we got the base out here because if there was no base, these suckers would have to go back to where there is a base. So that's a good reason why I put this base out because now they're locked in, they don't have to retreat home. Also at this time, you can move police if you want. Police can kind of just stay there. It's kind of hard to get police out into some of these province areas, uh, but once they're there, they're locked in unless they get you know booted out for some reason. So I can go and kind of ahead and shift stuff around now however I want, as long as the troops themselves end up in a spot where they have a base. Oh, and not just a base or city, I should say, they also need to have control there. So we also have control in that spot. Um, I think everything is pretty good how it is. I'm uh, just kind of overthinking that. Everybody should just stay where they're at. So then we're going to hit this here. Everybody's going to reset to eligible. And then any terror markers, I already removed that one. It's going to go away. Any sabotage would go away. Uh, you might get certain cards that stick around that are momentum cards, kind of a special ability until basically the next prop card comes up. Those will go away. And then we're going to open casinos here. So we open this one here. That will be a fourth uh, open casino. Any gorillas that are active are going to go back underground. So that was actually a very shrewd move, if I do say so myself, uh, for the DR gorilla. So now he's back hidden. So he got away with, uh, well, hopefully not real murder, but he got away with murder there. And now we're set back up to go into the next round of cards. Now I should have said that uh, we should have moved the propaganda card here and seen what was upcoming. That may have weighed on the decisions that we made during the propaganda phase. Um, not usually, but uh, I don't think it really mattered here. So uh, that is now the active card. And then the next card, I was scared that would be a propaganda card. Sometimes I've seen that. Uh, so if you take a look here, then the 26 is up to bat here. So this is L. Shea. It's an insurgent capability. And so what this means is that if I take that as the event, I can take this marker here, put it in the insurgent box, which is just up there, and mark that as a reminder, and then set the card aside here uh, to show that I now have a special ability. So what is this? Inspired military leader, the first group of guerrillas to move on each 26 March flips underground. So marching gorillas is basically, you know, moving them from uh, province to province. If there's a certain number of cubes there, they're automatically going to flip so that they are uh, visible. But you can actually, be, with this, if you take that, you can have it where they flip underground. Now that can be very sneaky and very dirty because you're going to be immediately underground and be able to do terror probably in the cities or other such areas. So the red player is going to go in here. He's gonna go ahead and take that event. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that there. I will probably forget that I have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the card and put it on top of the board up here. Normally I'd probably have it at the bottom actually, but I just have it here for kind of the logistics of the camera. Uh, so he's gone ahead and taken that. However, we are forgetting that the next player on the card here is the government. So he can go ahead, since the red player took the special event, that leaves this spot wide open for the blue player to come in there and do a special activity plus the action. Now the government would be looking at the next card, possibly looking at the event, maybe negotiating a little bit there with the syndicate player to see if he would maybe let him use the event. So what's the next event here? Uh, New York Times refutes Fidel's death. So 26 resources get plus five, aid goes down six. So that's not a good event for the government. It's a very good event for the red player. And the purple one, or the shaded one here is aid plus 10, directorio plus three, and syndicate plus five. Well. Hmm, I would say that the governments would be very interested to let the syndicate take that event. Um, and the syndicate would probably like that. They're going to be kind of in cahoots here. Um, government is not in too close to victory. Hard to know what you know anybody would do in a negotiation. I'm going to go ahead and just play that the government is going to go ahead and take their action special activity. And then they've negotiated with the syndicate to do the event. But here's the real trick. The government has a ton, a ton, a ton of resources. So they theoretically could 
spend all those resources. They could spend 16 here getting this back plus another four. So they could spend 20. They'd be down back at eight resources if they negotiated with the syndicate to do this card, which would give them another 10. So they would basically spend 10 resources, half of what they normally would, to get back into basically being on the cusp of winning. If one of these propaganda cards comes up soon, which it could, then the government would be ripe to win. And now someone would have to make an immediate kind of desperate strike. So now that I think about it, I don't think that the syndicate would be too keen on doing the event on that thing. So I don't think that's gonna change what the government does. I just don't think the syndicate's gonna do the event. So the government could do this, put them down at eight, I don't think that they would do it unless the syndicate promised to do the event. They may do some of it. So if I did 16 now, I would put me at 12 resources if I just did this, flipped it back to that. Because I've got all the troops out. I've only got one police in there and one base. Um, I could march guys around. I could maybe do a little strike you know, of guys into here to kind of irritate the uh, the 26 and, and the kind of a defensive mechanism there. I don't know what I'm going to do here. Let me think a minute.